Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my May allotment tour. On the tour, I cover all the jobs I've been doing, what's growing down here on the plot, and what I hope to do over the next few weeks. It's been a while since I've made an allotment tour, almost 10 months, but now's a good time to start again. The plot's 100% full, everything's growing strongly, and whilst there's not much to harvest right now, that should change over the next few weeks. It's always great to receive comments on the video, and please hit the like button if you like it. And for more growing content, please see my website. There are growing guides on all the fruit and veg I grow down here. That's allotmentbook.co.uk. So let's get started. I think now's a good time to do another allotment tour because the plot is 100% full. Every growing space is occupied. Only the rhubarb is ready to be harvested now, but I hope in four to six weeks there'll be plenty to pick down here. Starting with how the allotment is organised, my allotment is split 50-50 between fruit and vegetables. At the start of the plot I've got some blueberries and then a number of raised beds containing my vegetables. And the second half of the plot is taken up with my fruit cage. The front of the fruit cage contains gooseberries and currants. And the second half rows of hybrid berries including tayberries, loganberries, boysenberries and raspberries. And then right at the end of my allotment, I have my polytunnel. Beginning the tour with the blueberries, I hope this is coming out well on the camera, but the bushes are now covered in fruit. If I just zoom back, you can see that there's a mulch around the fruit bushes. This really helps to cut down on weeding. But the plot does suffer down here with mare's tail. To keep the mare's tail under control, I regularly just pick the heads off. It weakens the plant sufficiently that it, it never gets out of control. With the quantity of fruit down here, if I didn't net the bushes, everything would be lost to the birds. It's a job for the next few days to get the nets over the bushes again. I tie the nets up over the winter to stop them getting damaged by the wind. It also reduces the chances of any birds getting stuck inside the cage. The rhubarb is growing really strongly. I think I've got quite an early maturing variety. I'm able to pick the stems from late March, early April, depending on how the weather's been. I've got space for one apple tree down on the plot. There's no problem with cross-pollination because many plot holders have apple trees. This tree was only planted a couple of years ago and last year I didn't have anything off it. I think there was a late frost in April, May time. This year is looking completely different. The branches are covered with tiny apples, absolutely loaded with them. Now at the front of the fruit cage, I have a gooseberry plant over there. Next to it, a white currant bush red currants and then at the end two more gooseberry bushes. The white currant bush is new this year. If I just pan and compare that to the red currant bush next to it you can see there's a huge difference in size but it's not only size the red currant bush is also covered in leaves. In early spring I was worried that the white currant bush hadn't taken. I bought the plant last summer and left it in the pot. I needed to dig up the black currant bush that was here that had developed a disease. And by the time I dug the black currant plant up and planted the white currant bush, it'd probably been in its pot for another six months. However, even though it's developed its leaves quite late, it's looking in good health now. It's just reminded me that sometimes all that's needed is some patience and hopefully plants will recover. This gooseberry bush I have inside the fruit cage is probably the most prolific fruiter of all the bushes I have. It's the one nearest the sun and it is absolutely loaded with fruit. That is looking great. The blackberry bush that was here is a really large size and by removing it it has meant much more light is reaching the red currant bush that was behind it. This is also loaded with fruit. I hope it's possible to see all the fruit that's developing here. I haven't tied up all the branches. Over winter I didn't give it a big prune back that I've done in previous years. Before the end of autumn, I hope to give it a good prune to bring it back into a good shape. Another issue I have down here is bindweed. I need to keep a constant lookout for it because it grows so quickly. There are some leaves of the bindweed that is growing through this gooseberry bush I have at the end here. I'm constantly on the lookout for where it's growing up from the ground. It may be possible to see here, but this is now underneath the gooseberry bush. And all I do is pull it up. That's an example of a root of the bindweed. 
that route will actually be running all over the ground here so it's almost impossible to pull up completely but by constantly breaking the shoots it considerably weakens the plant and I'm able to keep it under control. The hybrid berries are looking great this year. This is a table bush which is like a wall of leaves. Along from that I have this Loganview plant. Much less leaves on that but it's always been a slightly later developer. And then right at the end here I have the boysenberry bush. Now if you've watched my allotment videos from about a year ago you will have seen this boysenberry bush being really small. I'd only planted it maybe 18 months ago. And look at it now, it's huge and covered in blossom. I really hope it's going to give a bumper harvest. Now one thing to point out, you may have noticed that my fruit cage at this section has lost its net roof. That was destroyed by the strong winds at the end of winter. On the roof I had used this butterfly netting that I had left over. But actually, I don't think it's fit for purpose. What's been much better is this bird netting. It's UV stabilised. I think it's more expensive to purchase than the butterfly netting. But it's much less prone to ripping. When I have left it unnetted, apart from there being very little fruit left on the bushes, the birds sometimes make a mess on the remaining fruit. When I first started having an allotment, it was all about growing vegetables and then I moved on to growing fruit and I didn't grow any flowers whatsoever. That's changed over the last few years. I really like growing flowers now. Flowers do attract bees and other beneficial insects to a plot but that's not why I grow them on my plot. To be honest the plots down here are surrounded by lovely wild flowers. I don't need to grow them for that reason but what I found is having flowers just makes the whole experience of gardening down here on the plot really enjoyable. To have something really pretty to look at through the growing season, I think it's just really enjoyable. Just outside my polytunnel, I found space for a little flower bed. I'll just come in here to show it better. It's very early days, but I've got some bulbs planted there and a cosmos in the middle. And I've sown a generous helping of edible flowers over the bed. I've got no intention of eating the edible flowers, but they're just quite easy to grow. I like to spread the flowers around the plot because I think it just makes it nicer to look at. So along here, next to the rhubarb, I have a couple of dahlia plants, one here and a second next to it here. This one is much further behind because I had allowed the rhubarb leaves to cover it for a long time. I have two more dahlia plants over here, right at the front of this potato bed. One here and one here. And then right at the front of the plot I have two more dahlia plants. One there and one over there. Now this is a new experiment this year. These dahlias will be going in between winter squash. Now winter squash should carpet this area but I hope the dahlia plants will be big enough to grow through the leaves of the winter squash and I think that should really help them because the shade of the squash leaves should keep the soil nice and moist and I'm hoping that will lead to a spectacular display of colour as a result. The winter squash plants and courgettes I've only recently planted out. Now I like to plant out my squash and courgettes when they are a really good size because when they're big like this I found they're much less susceptible to being eaten by slugs and snails. What I've also done this year is to surround the plants with straw. The purpose of the straw is to try and keep moisture in the soil. When they're large the leaves will naturally shade the ground but right now I hope that will reduce the amount of watering I need to do. Now to grow them this large for the middle of May, I germinated the seeds in the polytunnel. And this is one of the great things of having a polytunnel, it makes germination so much easier. Because at home I simply don't have enough protected growing space. And this is how I've done it this year. This is inside the polytunnel and I actually have a plastic greenhouse inside the polytunnel to provide extra warmth for the plants. And I've found this extra protection can make all the difference. These two plants here I actually didn't have space outside to use. Effectively they're in reserve in case any of the plants outside don't make it. I'm growing courgettes in exactly the same way as the squash, leaving them to grow to a good size inside the polytunnel before planting them out. And again using straw around the plants to keep moisture in. I have one bed totally dedicated to spinach and chard. I have chard on the right hand side and perpetual spinach on the left. Like with the squash I germinated the seeds inside the polytunnel 
but I did experiment with transplanting the plants at different stages through late winter and early spring. I moved the plants at the front here, probably out in the bed early March, and they are slightly larger than the plants at the back. These plants here are probably put out maybe two or three weeks ago. I'm hopeful of a harvest, but I found with perpetual spinach and chard, you never quite know because the soil here is quite sandy, which means it's dry, and that could mean that the plants run to seed. Potatoes are an easy crop to grow down on an allotment, and I'm growing four beds worth of potatoes this year. These two beds here, they contain Pentland Javelin, which is an early variety of potato. And then on the right hand side, I have a main crop variety called Picasso. I grew Picasso for the first time last year and I was really, really happy with the result. The potatoes were delicious, really fabulous. And I'm hoping for the same results this year. Next to the potatoes, I have an onion bed and my garlic bed at the end there. Now the onions were spring planted. I think I pushed the bulbs in early March. It should be possible to see that the garlic plants are much, much bigger. These I sowed in October last year. For the last couple of years, I've used homegrown garlic. At the end of summer, I reserve a few bulbs of the plants I've grown, split them and plant the cloves for the next year's harvest. That's proved to be really successful. It should be possible to see that the leaves of the elephant garlic are much, much bigger than the leaves of ordinary garlic. Now, elephant garlic cloves are relatively expensive to buy. I hope to use the same trick I use with the ordinary garlic that if there is a successful harvest this year, I'll reserve a few of the bulbs and use those to sow for next year's harvest. And then finishing the tour inside the polytunnel, quickly showing what I've used to germinate many of the seeds I've sown this year. These are these little containers that I fill with compost. And then, even though it's inside the polytunnel, it still gets quite cold in here, especially at night. I find these trays that have a plastic lid are excellent at helping the seeds to germinate and then they've got a little vent on top so once the seeds have germinated it's possible just to open the vent and that avoids too much moisture building up. I have a few chilli seedlings here they're very small at the moment and I'll try growing these on inside the polytunnel. Chilli plants love the heat and polytunnels are ideal environments for them. I have four cucumber plants here I've planted two per pot this is a variety called Mini Muncher. Now I hope they do produce a good harvest because the seeds were almost one pound each. It seems really expensive compared to the other seeds I buy. It's an F1 variety, so I can't score the seed and replant them next year. But I've grown the variety previously and Mini Munchers are absolutely delicious. They need to perform, otherwise I won't buy them again because it's just not worth the money when the seeds are that expensive. At the end of the polytunnel, I have my tomato plants. I have 11 plants at the moment, but I hope to generate more plants by taking cuttings, either by new leader stems that sometimes develop from the base of the plants, or when they're a little larger, it's possible to take cuttings from the elbow where you have new stems shooting up. The cuttings will fruit a little later, but they do help extend the harvest season. And that's it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.